everyone. My name is Amy Marish. I am a principal technical marketing manager at Red Hat, specializing in OpenStack. If you need to email me, I've got the easiest email ever. Amy at Red Hat. I am not an early Red Hatter. I just asked for it and it was available. Um, my Twitter is Spox with two Z's and an underscore. If you're looking for me on IRC or Matrix, I'm just Spox. One Z. And what we're going to talk about today. So a brief introduction to OpenStack. Going over what is OpenStack. Some care call statistics, which was the last release. Some history of the project. Um, then we're going to go over into some detail some of the more common OpenStack services. I tend to think of things as the order you would install them if you were installing them by hand and the <coughs> common core um, services. So there's going to be an overview, the individual services themselves, and then I'm going to end with getting involved. And then if there's any time, there should be because I talk fast, Q&A. So the introduction to OpenStack. So what exactly is OpenStack? It's infrastructure as a service. It uses a common API, so the same API that you use for Nova. It's the same structure as you would use for Neutron. And more recently, you can use third-party services like Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, in addition to the OpenStack SDK. Why it was false? That's why. 
Okay, so the OpenStack services. OpenStack is made of various projects that comprise the different services. Now we refer to them back and forth in the project, you know, so you might hear, hear someone say, oh, I'm working on Nova, and someone else is going to say, well, I work on Compute. It's the same thing. Now the most common ones, So these are the ones we're going to mainly talk about. And when you install, there's a certain order you install. And that's the order we're going to talk about them in. Now, Horizon is the most common um, way of interface. But Skyline is a more recent project that is in the process of becoming an um, accepted project. There's a few last minute things they need to do and report back to the TC and then Skyline will be a permanent project. Now we have three storage, Swift, Cinder, and Manila. We're going to be talking about Cinder and Swift today. There are, okay. so then we have um, Nova and Zoom, which are your compute. Nova is virtual machines, Zoom is um, containers. We have three networking, Qtron, Octavia, and Designate. And we have some hardware life cycles, Ironic and Cyber. And then there's the shared resources. Keystone, which is your identity server, your authentication, which we're going to go into some detail. Placement that originally started as part of Nova and is now back under the Nova project, so I don't tend to talk about it separately. I talk about it as part of placement of Nova. Um, then we have Glance, which is your images, and Barbican, which is scared, shared um, keys. Um, we're not going to talk about that today. Okay, so we're going to talk about how the services interact with each other. Keystone. Like I mentioned, the first thing you're going to install, not including Horizon, everything goes through so We have Lance, which is the second thing you're going to install, Nova, your compute, Neutron, your networking, Horizon, the dashboard, Cinder, which is block storage, Swift, which is object storage, and Heat. Now, Keystone provides the authentication for everything. And we'll go into a little more detail on how it actually works. Horizon provides the UI for everything. Neutron provides networking for Nova. Lance stores the images that Nova's going to use. Swift can be used to store the images. It stores disk files. Um, Cinder provides volumes for Nova. And Heat, you can use it to orchestrate it all. So the identity servers, Keystone, um, it provides the API client for authentication, which I mentioned, service discovery and distributed multi-tenant authoriza authorization. So you can have multi-cloud, multi-region, multi-domain. Authentication, some terminology we're going to go over real quick before we get into some more interesting drawings. Um, your credentials, your roles, the token, which gives your author authorization, and the user. But the user isn't just a person, it's also the services. And when you look at the catalog, that is what's shown back as the Keystone services. Some service discovery terminology, the endpoint, your APIs, you have public, admin, and private, and the service themselves. Multi-tenant authorization, that's some common terminology you'll hear, is the domain. The user can only be in one domain. You can be in multiple groups. You can be in multiple projects. Projects is also sometimes used with the word tenant. So if you hear someone talk about a tenant, they're talking about the project. And region. Multi-region, you've got your stuff in different regions. It still can be the same data center, though. OK, retrieving a token. I said we have more interesting diagrams. So you have your user. We send their credentials to the identity server. The identity server sends back the user to receive a token. And then they send the token in the request, whether it's to compute, block, 
networking image, whatever service they want to talk to, they send their request to their token. And then those services check back in with identity to see if they actually have authorization to talk to them. They do, and they get the request back. So retrieving the token itself. The user credentials are sent along with the desired tenant. Remember I said those were interchangeable to the identity server. And Keystone sends back a list of available services as well as the token that was provided. The user, through the API or the um, command line or even Verizon, determines the correct endpoint to launch the VMs. And then the token is provided along with the request to the endpoint. So all the information that you get from the user of the API to the endpoint. So let's look at Glance. The API com comes in from the user, whether it's through the command line, directly up to the API or through the UI. It then sends that information to the Glance registry, which talks to the Glance database. The database goes back to the API. The API now goes, hey, you're allowed to talk to me. And then we have the, the different Glance stores. As I mentioned earlier, it could be Swift, but you can use S3, you can use the actual file system, or you can do use an RDB. The Nova architecture. Again, you have an API which talks to the conductor, and the conductor then talks to the compute. The API can directly talk to the compute in the hypervisor. Now, for safe security reasons, the API doesn't always talk to the database anymore. That is the job of the conductor. The conductor will also talk to the scheduler. The scheduler is going to say, hey, I've got space on this compute. Go ahead and put that new VM there. And that's also what placement does. But placement does it to a finer degree. Um, with placement came cells V2, if anyone's heard of that, um, which allows you to have bigger infrastructure by dividing your things up into the different cells. Networking, we have the Neutron server with the various plugins. Um, you have the plugin agent, the level three agent, the DHCP agent. They all go through a message queue, which is most commonly the rabbit and queue. Um, the server and the plugin talk to the database as well. And this is kind of, this is an older drawing, but this is what the architecture looks like underneath Neutron. So you have instances, um, Linux network utilities, Linux bridge engine agent. So this is a little older. This is looking more at OBS. OBN? Yes. OBS versus OBN, which is the newer um, architecture being used. Um, but it's still basically the same. And you have what's on the compute and what's running on the controller and then how the physical networks actually interact. The provider networks. Um, and you can have multi-tenancy and have different networks for the different projects. And just to mention some additional networking projects is Octavia, which is load balancing. And Designate, which is DNS. The dashboard, this is just a picture of Verizon. Um, Skyline looks very similar. Um, some of the work still being done on Skyline is more plugins to have, have access to all the different projects, whereas Horizon has those. But the actual configuration for those is usually done from the project itself, which then provides it for the Horizon team. All right. Cinder. So Cinder is block storage. You have your API, um, which talks to the database. The database can talk to the scheduler, the different volumes. Um, also utilizes a message queue. Um, so all the lines that are in red are the message queue talking back and forth, whereas the black is actually coming from the API. Um, you can have multiple volumes. And in those volumes, you can have multiple drivers and multiple storage backends. 
and then you have the backup driver, which is with a backup storage. Swift is the object storage. Like I mentioned earlier, it was one of the first two projects. You have your account, and you have containers within your account. Your container can have one object, or it can have multiple objects. And looking a little bit at the Swift architecture, you have a Swift box. <coughs> that is the name of the API. Swift can also be run solo. You do not have to run it with the whole of the stack cluster. Um, you have an account backend, container backend, and the object backend. This refers back to the other slide, and each one has a database as well. I just want to mention some of other projects. We have Ironic for bare metal. Cyborg for accelerators. Deployment projects, Cola Ansible, very popular. OpenStack Ansible, that's where I got my start within OpenStack. And recently is Sunbeam is a newer project. So how to get involved? Contributions. But what are contributions? Code? Yeah, everyone knows code. Documentation, very important. Reviews. I can review code very quickly, very thoroughly. I'm not a coder. Translations, very important. Special interest groups, so people who have a common interest <coughs> in different subjects. Public cloud this is um, a very active one, as is scientific. And then we have working groups. Currently, the only working group, which is working groups are under the board, the diversity and inclusion. Any questions? 